Uh, if, if you had asked me uh, uh, just a little while, while back, uh, if I ever thought that something like this would occur, I would have said, hell no. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> and I'll be honest with you, when Minister Farrakhan announced at a gala uh, out at the celebrities, so that is yeah, so, so international in Hollywood. He announced at that day in 2009 the marriage between the Church of Scientology uh, and the Nation of Islam. I said, what? <laughs> what is he talking about? I, I couldn't see that there was any possibility of that taking place. Uh, but today's meeting, and other meetings that have taken place over the last year uh, have confirmed that there is a buddy growing, flourishing relationship that is being established among the two, unlike, two most unlikely uh, groups or organizations, the Church of Scientology and the Nation of Islam. So part of what I wanted to talk about today uh, was developed uh, maybe three or four months ago. Uh, I was asked to speak at the Ebony Rising Convention uh, class, and I thought it was a good opportunity, since I would be speaking mostly to Scientologists, to, to explain a little bit about the organization of Islam's teaching uh, as given to us by the Ebony Rising So the title is A Little Peek. This is not a big peek. This is just a little peek into the grand vision of the Ebony Rising Um now this is uh, our founder. This, this is uh, according to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. This is God in person. This is Master Farah Muhammad. So when you hear the Nation of Islam Muslims refer to Allah in the person of Master Farah Muhammad, this is, this is He. This is the one who came to the wilderness of North America. I'm, I'm using one of the things I'm doing here this afternoon. I'm using Nation of Islam language. Uh, and then showing you a correlation, perhaps, with the language of Scientology. Not that I'm an expert in Scientology, but to the degree that I know some of the Scientology terminology, I'll try to make that correlation. Uh, that way, in the future, uh, we'll better understand one another. Okay. So this is our concept of God. We don't believe in a mystery God. We don't believe in some space spook mystery God somewhere out in the universe beyond the sun, moon, and stars that you can't get in touch with. Yeah. We don't believe in that. We believe that uh, Allah is a man and always has been a man. And further, that you and I in our essential nature are God. It's not hard to understand. If we talk about human characteristics, there's always somebody that is better than somebody else. If we wanted to have a, a foot race with this group here, somebody in this room would be the fastest one, right? Yeah. If we wanted to high jump, so you would jump the highest. We, we, we might all be able to jump, but somebody would jump higher than anybody else. Yes, sir. And of course, that's what the Olympics is all about, right? You're trying to find out who in the whole world is the fastest runner, the fastest swimmer, the highest jumper, the best uh, bicycle rider. There's always one who is supreme over the, all over the others. They all have the same essential ability, but there's always one that's supreme. So when you talk about those abstract qualities or attributes of human beings, these are divine attributes, these are godly attributes, and the human being in his natural native state, as I think L. Ron Hubbard would put it, um, He's quite a remarkable being. What we have today in the human being uh, is not a good example of what human potential actually is. Yes, and that's what we're engaged in. This work that we are doing, uh, we use the term resurrection. We're trying to resurrect the dead. We are the dead. We don't believe that there are dead people in a cemetery, physically dead, who are going to be raised up on some great day. We believe that we are the mental dead, and we are being raised today by a teaching that was brought by this man, Master Farah Muhammad. Yes, sir. Now, we further believe, although we can't prove it, we, we believe he met El Ron Hubbard. 
his father was a black man, a, a jet black man, a 100% aboriginal black man. Black as midnight. <laughs> his mother was a Caucasian uh, from the Caucasus Mountains. And it is said, according to the Nation of Islam teaching, that this jet black man went into the hills and cave sides of Europe and cleaned up a Caucasian woman and made her his wife and through her produced uh, this child uh, who was the fulfillment of prophecy. The son of man who was to come and judge the world. Just tell you what we believe. Okay? <laughs> Now there's an interesting sidelight on what it would mean to clean up a Caucasian woman. <laughs> and this man taught that the white race is a race of devils. Okay. That there is a nature uh, that was separated out from the original people. And when it was put into a manifest form, you had a new race of people called Caucasian. Yes, sir. And we have not had a good time or good relationship with these people over many, many years. That's right. So to clean her up might mean that this uh, devil nature is what Scientology would refer to as a reactive mind. <laughs> that makes you other than righteous, that makes you other than your own self, that makes you aberrated, contrary to what is right and wholesome and good and uplifting. And so to clean up a person with that kind of a nature, that kind of reactive mind, is might, might be what you would refer to as diabetics processing, erasing ingrams, uh, removing the, uh, the bank, I'm saying it correct. correct. I'm new to Scientology. <laughs> I don't really know this stuff yet. I'm trying to learn it and I'm determined to go over the bridge. I just finished TRs and objectives. Oh. <laughs> Since I did TRs and objectives, uh, I was on that part, you know, the bottle and the book. <laughs> and pop. I haven't been back in since. <laughs> uh, this, is, this is great. Uh, it gives me a lot of insight into things that I didn't have before. Yeah. Uh, because you might see me standing here, but I'm actually there. <laughs> <laughs> if you understand. Yeah. So, I didn't actually know that exteriorization was uh, one of the goals of Scientology. I didn't actually know that. Yes, sir. But when it happened, I said, you know, this is really great. I think I'll go the rest of the way over the bridge. Yeah. <laughs> and I intend to do that. So this is Master Farah Muhammad. And it might mean, there's a hint in our teaching, I don't have time to go into it to, tonight, that, that perhaps there was a kind of processing uh, that was done um, uh, in the Caucasus that produced a special kind of a person. And the reason that I think that is because uh, there's, um, well, this is segregated. I know, I thought so too. That ain't right, is it? <laughs> See, in America, this, America is a racist place. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And there's a certain attitude that is carried by whites, and there's a certain attitude that's carried by blacks. And the racist attitude that is dominant in this country, especially among whites, that I've felt all my life, I'm 62 years old, I have never felt that among Scientologists. Yes, right. So now, see, now this, this is something that uh, uh, is boggling to the mind of a black Muslim. Yes. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> so, see, what, what happened to these people that we were taught were devils? Yes. Well, they were processed by Scientology. Yes, sir. That's right. And if they were devils, they're not devils anymore. That's right. Let's give yourself that. Well, that is a very interesting thing to observe. 
that people that we never had a, a, a natural affinity for, suddenly uh, there seems to be that natural affinity where we reach out to you and you reach out to us and there is a warm, loving, uh, friendly, helpful embrace. Yes. And it feels comfortable, it feels right. Yes, sir. You don't know us all together and we don't know you all together, but so far, seems to be pretty good. <laughs> we look forward to more. Oh, good. Now, I, 